Hello everyone, welcome to the second video of my channel which will be the continuation of the first video and thank you so much for the response on the first video and please suggest any uh, suggestions that you have for me and any uh, information that you find useful and would help me. If you haven't watched that video, you can find that from the card which will be displayed on the top right corner here. And let's uh, get back into the uh, current video. So now in this video, we'll look at uh, how to download the files from S3 buckets using fast API. So in the previous video, we have created an endpoint to upload the files to fast API, which we can see in the swagger UI here. So this will upload the files and we are doing it fine. Okay, we are generating a unique file a file name and uh, we are not giving this file name to the front end. So the client doesn't know what exactly the file name will be. So for that, to make things easier for the client, let's return the file name to the client so that he can request that when he asks for the download endpoint. Okay. So I'm just gonna say file name is equal to the generating string, the f string which we used, and then say that uh, to S3 upload function that hey the key is just the file name, and also return uh, the file name generated. Okay, so now in the response. We have the file name so that the front end knows that okay this is our new file name generated by the back end so while uh, requesting for download they will be able to provide the file name that we have stored actually in the s3 bucket before moving on to further details and description let me just cover uh, two simple things that i missed in the previous video so the basic thing what does s3 mean what exactly is S3 doing? What is its uh, functionality here? So S3 is just a cloud storage service provided by Amazon. They are providing this service because uh, they ensure uh, a very good scalability based on uh, the file sizes that we upload. And they also ensure that your files are always available anywhere and at any time with uh, the highest security and performance possible. It's all secure and you can also limit the access to the files to a particular accounts in your AWS uh, uh, account. So that is basically S3. So it's just used for uh, storage of files and make it easy for us as developers. And then the second thing is S3 is really secure and it, it does not allow people who are not authorized to access the files. But where am I authorizing my code here? I'm using the Bodo3 library, right? But where am I actually authorizing it? I'm not providing any credentials, am I? Hmm. So I'm just gathering the resource S3 and creating a bucket instance with the bucket name. I don't see any credentials. But how is it actually allowing, uh, how is AWS allowing my code my server to connect to it and upload and download files. It's because I have the AWS CLI tool installed and configured. Let's look at what that means. So AWS CLI is a tool provided by uh, AWS. So while creating your AWS account and creating uh, accounts inside that, you, you need to uh, download and install the AWS CLI tool. It's not mandatory, but it is uh, uh, recommended and good. So uh, in my case, I, I downloaded for Linux and configured it by running this command, which they have provided in this section. And don't worry, I'll provide all the links to the description in the description so that you can go and check them out by yourselves. So as you can see, once you have installed it according to your OS, you can run this command AWS space configure. So the CLI asks you for uh, your uh, access key ID and the access key itself. Once you provide everything, what the CLI does is it will store these keys in your computer, in your machine itself. So once that is done, as you already have the keys stored in your computer, 
Bodo 3 automatically detects everything. So here Bodo 3 is actually looking for that saved keys inside my computer and it will directly use them to authenticate with AWS. So let's say you don't have this CLI installed. So what should you do then? Don't worry, you have this session class provided by Bodo3. If you don't have the access key inside your uh, machine by CLI tool, you can use this class and provide it the keys directly so that it will create an instance of session for you and uh, you can create the session like this as I have commented here. So you can use this session variable, session object, which is returned by that class instead of Boto3 here. So that will perfectly work fine for you. So I'm just putting it back as I don't need to do that. So now those two things are covered. Let's jump right back into our problem. So we are trying to download the file from the S3 bucket using fast API. So the flow will be like this. So the client will ask the fast API at this URL with a query parameter containing the file name, which we generated while uploading. And the fast API will authorize. In our case, we'll not have the authorization, but you can include that by adding some JWT tokens or things like that. And then ask S3 bucket and to get the resource to download the file from S3 and it will send the file contents back to the client so that he can download it onto uh, his browser computer. So for that, we first need to have an endpoint, which will be a get method with uh, the download as the URL and the function name will also be download the function is going to take the file name as a query parameter it will be a string so I'm just putting the query parameter there and for safety we can just make the default as none here so if nothing is provided in the query parameters it will consider that the file name is none so if the file name is none we can handle the edge case by raising an HTTP exception with the status code as 400 bad request so I'm just uh, returning a bad request and detail as uh, no file name provided and you can do a similar thing for uh, uh, the file length as well uh, I'm just putting it as file name for now just for simplicity you can add the file length also file name length if the file name length is zero then you can raise the exception as well so in our case I'm just uh, gonna paste uh, a couple of lines of code to save some time for you which is this okay so we handle the edge case that's fine and what are we doing here so in this line, we are calling a function which is not yet defined. I'll define that in a second. So we are calling this function and giving it the key as the file name. And this function connects with S3 bucket, our S3 bucket, and then downloads the file with this particular key name, file name. We are just awaiting that as it's asynchronous. And let's first create that and then look at this uh, mess up, mess going or going around here. So let's just define that download function just below the upload. So it's gonna it's gonna be an async. Sorry. Download and it's gonna take a key which is a string. Sorry, it's not a G. It's a key. <laughs> and uh, I'm just pasting the function body to save some time okay so now we are we have a try block and an accept block okay so let's look at the return statement first and then we'll uh, talk about this uh, accept and try things so we have the s3 resource already here 
So if you are using session, you would be calling session dot resource. But here I'm using Bodo three dot resource. So from that S three resource, which we already have, we need to call the object with the bucket name, which is our bucket name, and then pass in the key. So it needs to find out which object you are actually referring to, and then you need to get the contents and extract the body key. So you are reading the body of the object and then you are reading it so that it will return you uh, a byte stream. Okay, so this will give you uh, a byte stream just like we did uh, in the previous uh, uh, upload video. So now what, what is this exception? Okay, so this exception is uh, a Boto3 uh, custom exception that Boto3 raises in case it doesn't uh, get the object downloaded. So in case something goes wrong like if the key is not found or if there are any connection issues then it will just simply raise this client error which we will import now from Boto Core. So they have all the exceptions in Boto Core dot exceptions. So these are their uh, custom exceptions we are just interested in the client error right so once we import that now it is looking good and happy so just to avoid internal server errors in case uh, aws or uh, the boto3 fails to connect to aws we will just uh, log that hey there's an error uh, we couldn't get the file but it will not crash the server okay so now we have the download function defined this is done and we have the bytes in the contents variable now we are returning a response which is a fast api uh, response you can import that from fast api and the content is going to be the bytes which we got from the download function and these are the headers okay and you don't need the last header which is uh, it just works perfectly fine without that as well so the first header is content disposition. So what this does? So it is saying that uh, the content disposition is an attachment. So with this header, the browser will be able to know that it has to take the contents and save them to the disk of the computer it's running on. So it will take the file name as a file name and save that onto the disk. So if you want to not save the file onto the disk and just display it you can say inline so this will actually uh, just display it in the browser only if the browser supports the file type it will not display uh, uh, rare file types like if you try to display an excel file or a word docs file it, it might not uh, be able to do that because browsers generally doesn't support those kinds of files they might support pngs jpegs and text and pdf files but not every file right so i'm just uh, sticking to the attachment because the objective here is to download the file not uh, not uh, displaying the file in the browser and then this header specifies that uh, we don't know the file type we we are not exactly sure about the file type but we ensure that uh, the content is going to be uh, an octet stream which is basically a byte stream you can also say application slash pdf or image slash png image slash jpeg in case you are absolutely sure that your file is of a particular type but hence we support multiple file types i'm not gonna do that so yeah that's about it we are almost done with uh, our api and uh, our api is running you can see that here so it's all perfect and running and uh, let me just stop and clear the console just for your uh, convenience and you can see that it's running at the local host 8000 port which i'll be going now and fast api by default provides us with this url uh, with this path where you will find this swagger ui which is really easy for debugging and uh, the front end development so these are our three endpoints first we'll upload the file and get the file name so let me choose a file so I'm, I'm choosing this file and if i execute i should get 
the file name generated so this is the file name generated so I can use that to uh, download the file so let me check the bucket as well so this is my s3 bucket and if I refresh I see that uh, this is the exact same file d297dc so as I have that already in the bucket now I need to download that so I am just trying it out and pasting the file without quotations so that it will not uh, disturb anything and if I execute you can you can see that uh, it, it gave us a nice link where you can click and download you can see the uh, headers also uh, the file name is uh, nicely uh, populated here and uh, the browser will just download that so as you can see the file name is what we generated d297dc and you can save that onto the disk so it's downloaded and you can open that here so yes uh, that's about how to download files from s3 bucket without exposing your s3 uh, to the client here we have fast api sitting in between and protecting the s3 bucket not exposing it to the client i hope you like this video and make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed it and if you have any suggestions for me please leave them in the comments uh, we can learn together we can code together happy coding thank you guys for all the love and support bye bye